Hello Guardians, it is Ebontis, and in this one I just want to explain tips for Nightmare Containment just to make you an efficient teammate for everybody else who's in there because we're all going to be trying to farm this thing and I'd like to make everybody as good as possible at this thing as we can. So the goal here is I'm going to basically play an entire run of Nightmare Containment. So you can see Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3. While I not, may not see every piece of the encounter, you'll see a lot of it. The idea is you're going to have Nightmares that come out, you got to kill those, then you're going to have, that's in like round 1. Then you've got round two, which is going to be like the illusion guys who then spawn a couple guys that you got to punch inside their like invulnerable bubbles. And then around three is going to be like double kind of mini, mini boss nightmares. And then the fourth round is going to be the actual boss of that tier. You've got tier one, tier two, which is basically going to be everything doubled just in a different location in the Castellum. And then tier three is the actual final boss run. And that's going to take place in the same spot every time. Now, this is week one. We don't know if containment is actually going to take place in different locations on the Castellum. Or if it's going to be in the same place the entire time. Honestly, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens next week. If we have drastic changes, tune in. We'll talk about that more. But there are a couple things that happen during your time in the Castellum and doing Nightmare Containment that I want to cover before we go in there. One, there are patrols. I kind of go over this actually at the end, and I'll show you that there are some things you can do during Nightmare Containment to actually earn you more of both the reputation and the currency that we're going for in here. And then there's also things you can do to help make your time in Nightmare Containment easier. And the biggest one, honestly, is your ghost. My advice is if you can deal with the 10% experience, which you probably should since we're going to be playing enough, my recommendation is to run Combo Detector anytime you're running around the Castellum at all. And the main reason is anytime you open a chest in the Castellum, whether it's from the doors that I show you at the end of the encounter, which you actually get a chance at two little mini secret chests. I'll show you where all of those are at the end, so stay tuned to the end of the video. We've got um, also currency that's running around. And when you get one of the very first upgrades at the Crown of Sorrow, you can also earn some of the um, Vestige of Dread just by picking up the resources on the Castellum. So my recommendation is have the combo detector on the whole time, and then also pay attention to the patrols, try and pick a couple of those up while you're running through, and that way you can make the most use of every single run. Tier one, tier two, tier three, doing multiple things each time. After tier three, you've got the secret chest to go for. So this is my guide to explain how best to take advantage of everything that's going on in Nightmare Containment to be a good teammate and also get the most out of it. So we're just gonna jump straight into Nightmare Containment Tier 1 right about now. All right, so it looks like we've got a good group in here. This thing's probably gonna start very soon and I'm gonna walk you guys through the actual encounter. Nightmares are converging in your location. So again, Begin one thing you can do is make sure you got those patrols active. So if you find a patrol, bring up one and see if you can activate that patrol. But the idea is what happens when it starts, you're gonna have enemies that just start coming. And your goal is you're going to be trying to clear out as many of the enemies as you can. And your goal is to take out the big guy. So you got the Dread Bears. These are going to be the nightmares that you have to fight the entire time. Now, your goal is going to be pick up these things right here. These unstable essences. These allow you to do more damage. And it's usually like, I don't know, 50, 60, 70% more damage. It's absolutely massive. Now, when you kill one of those, it drops a uh, Orb of Dread. You know, you'll notice he's going to run that back to there. He's going to dunk it, which gives us a few more shards, but it also spawns a scythe. And I'm going to try and get one to spawn on my end as well. There's a couple champions here that spawn in the middle. No big deal on those. Now, this is the in-between phase. Again, have this thing on here. Always just run around and pick it up. The in-between phase involves illusionists. Basically what it is, you have to kill the guy, and then they're going to spawn the actual guy that you have to kill. When that one goes down, you're going to see the little fog cloud spawn. And then you're going to see these guys. You can't shoot them. What you actually have to do is jump inside and punch or just run in there and get the damage. But you have to get past the outer shield. It's kind of a very old mechanic from the old raid. So that's like the middle section. So you've got tier, you've got phase one, couple of bosses. Phase two, the illusionist guys. And then phase three is going to be more of the bosses. In theory, your goal is to try and kill all of these as fast as possible. So you have enough time to kill the actual boss. Now again, typically one of the best times to pop your super is when you've got the unstable essence. Now you'll notice we have double the dread bears this time. So in the first round we had one set, second round we have two sets, and that's on this side, but there's also some coming from the other side. Now this is the orb of control the orb of dread. So if you see it on the ground, it's the little red one. Pick that one up, 
what we're going to do is take this back to the main mi middle spot. And when you dunk this one, what you're going to get is a little plus five, which is fine. Just progress towards the event. But you're also going to get the scythe. The scythe is very powerful. And it's honestly really cool to use. So it does a couple of different attacks. What you can do with it... You've got a quadruple swing, and now we're on the boss phase. So we're on basically phase four. So you have single bosses, kind of the illusionist phase, and then double bosses, and then the actual boss of the encounter. Now, if you're doing enough damage, you're in that middle phase. In here, what you need to do is actually take out these. And these are like the keys that you've seen in Wellspring. It's the little darkness keys, and those basically keep the shield on him until they're all gone. Once they're gone, then you're good to do damage to them. I'm working on a bounty right now, hence the glaive. This is one of the new glaives. Just using it just for more entertainment value than anything. So this is going to be tier one. The only difference in tier two, not much of one, it's just going to be at a different location. But if you kill the boss for the wave that you're on, you're going to get a big heavy box right here. And it's going to reload your ammo completely. Your special, your heavy everything will be refilled. So for like my machine gun, that's 220 bullets. All of them are full. So you're going to find the next containment zone. If you're down here, then it's either going to be up where it is now, or it's going to be down below. Oh, wasted that ammo brick. It's going to be down below in this area over here. So those are your only three options. So down here is one where we just were. And then up here by the suns, you've got three different locations for phase one and phase two. It's actually a good area to show phase two. It's just got a wider area to look at. But that's the same thing. You're going to have two fronts to fight. So we're going to have one over here. We're going to have one over here. And you basically just have to manage the two fronts of the fight and kill as all the adds that you can as quickly as possible. Things like machine guns are good. Again, if you find the unstable essence, that's going to be a benefit in there. Trying to use your abilities, these new solar ones, as much as you can are good. But again, I've got nine seconds of unstable essence. I've got a good amount of damage I can do with my abilities here. And your idea is try to stay alive if you're trying to do bounties as well. And know that sounds like Captain Complete Obvious there. But there's a lot of stuff that comes at you sometimes. It can be a little chaotic. If you die, don't worry about it. Somebody should probably res you. But again, remember, you got one boss on each side over here. Now that guy's probably going to try and kill me, but it's fine. So again, if you can find the Unstable Essence, which this guy dropped, then now I'm going to pop my super, try and kill this guy. And then if I finish this one off, I'm going to go take care of the other side. Notice he dropped the orb as well. All right, so both are down. So these are going to be the champions that we want to take out. I still have to figure out what the Dread Devourers do. If there's a higher difficulty, maybe those are going to have a thing to it. But right now, there's overload champions. They probably do something to, like, lower progress or stop your progress or something along those lines. But we'll just have to see. So, over here, you're going to have a few ads. And again, same principle. But now notice on tier two, I've got a set of the illusionist over on the right and the left. So you've got two sets of illusionist on tier two. Basically things just get to be a bit more intense on this one. But same thing on the next phase, you're going to have, um, so notice when I kill that one, the little orb shows up. So you gotta go inside for the punch. Same thing on this side over here. And again, remember machine guns got the huge buff that they did. They're still definitely worth using. Same reason I have the combo detector on. When I'm running around, I may not notice it's there. But if I have the combo detector to remind me, I'll pick up more of that resource and just get a little of these materials that I need the entire time. So once the illusionists are gone, you're going to get back to the double bosses on each side. Now is a good time to use your super if you've got it. Or if you can do anything that's going to be able to make you a lot of damage in any way. So for me, it's going to be the option of theoretically either dumping heavy ammo... Or maybe I'm just at a point where I don't have as much damage, but I can try and manage some of the adds. Maybe that's my goal in this one is to manage the adds. But we have double bosses this time. Again, same as before. So really have quite a bit to manage. I'm really low on ammo right now, so I don't know if the other side's doing better than me. But again, this side can definitely be a struggle. I'm going to die, but there's an ammo brick. And this is where things like scavengers, reserves, stuff like that's going to help you be more beneficial. Especially because you get to refill. But there is my unstable essence. So I can put a good little bit of work in. And get a grenade on the ground rolling towards him. I can fire this thing out if I can. 
And again, I've also got my hammer that can sit there and fire a chunk out. And your goal is truly just to, you know, stay alive, do as much damage, and be a good teammate. I'm not running like an optimal loadout right now, but it's kind of working. Now this worries me because we're actually going slower than I would like to be. Because either we lost the group or maybe they're dying too. Ammo's a bit of an issue, kind of like my situation. People aren't using the scythes that are being dunked. Like that guy's coming back. Because we're only going to have a minute to actually kill the entire boss in this one. Which is definitely going to be a problem. So I don't know what the other side's been doing. But I feel like I've been trying to manage this side all on my own. There we go. And again, it's not a big deal if you don't kill the boss. The only difference is you're not going to get the heavy ammo box when it comes to the final wave. Look so and take that one over there and dunk it. And then once the final one is dunked, we're going to have 90 seconds on this guy. So we're definitely going to have to act fast. If I can find an unstable essence, I will pop my super. That's kind of my goal here. As you have the others. So again, try and find a nightmare since at this point I can't really wait any longer. I just got to do the damage I need to do. But again, if you can get people to coordinate in 90 seconds, we can still kill the boss. So it did give us a little bit more time. If you are faster, you're going to have even extra time. But even if you're not faster, you're still going to be doing quite a bit of damage. You get him to halfway, he's going to pop the shield. You've got to get the, uh, basically all these little darkness keys killed. And again, 53 seconds. There's usually four keys on this one. There's six for the final boss. Hit him in the face with a hammer just to stun him a little bit. I really wish I had some heavy ammo, but that's the goal of kill. That's the bonus of killing this guy. If you don't have any going into the final boss, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. But if you can kill him, like all of the scythes they're doing right now, it's going to be a good thing. Now, there are a couple of like really glowy guys that are going to spawn. Those are going to be the ones that are going to spawn the dread situations. Why is this guy holding the orb? Go dunk it, you crazy, crazy person. Anyway, it's a new encounter. Not everybody knows what to do. There we go. All right, killed him with 13 seconds to go. That's pretty tight, but we got there. But here's the heavy ammo box. Everything is going to get refilled. And now we're going to go to the final stage. Final stage is always up at the top. And again, this is the thing, like when you run up here, sometimes there's going to be a couple of these resources just kind of hanging out. Now you've got a little while. If you want to wait, wait for somebody else to uh, actually spawn the round, you can. I'm still waiting for my super to recharge. Grab a couple of these resources. I'm basically ready to go. But maybe other people are not, depending on if you play with an organized group. you got a little time to spawn it. But at this point, you just want to kill him as fast as possible, but you have three damage phases on this one. He is... Flying very high. I'm not entirely sure what launched him that high. Maybe it's the Sea Chammer, but that was crazy. And at a certain point, you're going to have some adds come out. So watch his health once he gets a certain bit low. Adds should be coming out. If they're not on this side, they will be coming out on the other side. For some reason, last time, there were, like, no adds on the other side for me. So. I usually like to throw my hammer, see if that can actually cause a little fire pit. Oddly, right now, there's not too many adds. There's normally a ton of adds that are spawning, like... Constantly, so this is probably a weird server glitch or something right now of this instance that I'm in. But normally you've got ads coming out the entire time, bunch of stuff to kill. See, kind of like this. And this is where I enjoy throwing my hammer, kind of getting this giant fire tornado killing everything over there. It works, like, extremely well. The little fire tornado the sunspot does, so I enjoy that one. Now this is where you've got six of the keys, so kill these as fast as possible. Because you want to be able to take out the abominations. Also, watch out for the uh, big explody guys. Those are going to hurt. Now, once the shields are down, you're going to have the emissaries to go through. These guys really aren't too bad. As you can see, they went down pretty quick. And then, at this point, you've got phase two. And you're just going to rinse and repeat a couple more times. So your goal is in here, if you're trying to farm, bring the most efficient build that you can. If you got a whole bunch of grenades that come out when you kill one guy and you can have tons of damage going all the time. Sunspots for me are working very well right now with solar as I experiment. And normally I wouldn't be using a glaive, for example. I've been using trace rifles for a bunch of output and DPS. You know, if you enjoy a certain type of damage, whatever it may be, find what works for your subclass. But that's the goal, is to be high DPS output all the time because speed is going to benefit you here. 
when we wrap this thing up, I basically already recorded the outro to this, so I'm going to cut over to that. But here we go again. It comes. So again, another phase. You've got these keys, six of them that you've got to kill. Little darkness, splinters, whatever they're exactly called. Somebody will probably give me the right name. Once all the darkness splinters are killed, and hopefully there's not too much that's trying to kill me. Too much, of course. Recommended power is 1600. If you feel like you're taking a bit of a hit, I know it bumps your power up a little bit in this thing, but honestly, if you feel like you're taking a bit of a hit, you're not alone. Stuff hurts in here. It stacks up after a while. And again, there can sometimes be a couple of these like blighted tears. There's a couple of guys that will be sitting around and they glow a little bit. They're going to drop those orbs of dread, which you can actually spawn the scythes from. I don't always see them, but they're sometimes there. As this seems like a pretty clean run, I might just actually continue the outro here. And from here, what you're going to get is a chest, which is going to give you the basic loot and 56 reputation, possible engram. I actually got a bow, not a craftable one. And then you've got your nightmare harvester that you need to bind the rewards How's and see what you get. I got a weapon, I got seven holiday. umbral energy, and another 56 crown of influence. So it's 108, theoretically, I've per one. So now, the path I'm going on right now don't. are going to be the five possible switches that, that are going to be in front of doors that you can open. The, the two chests are going to give you a little extra reputation, a little extra vestige Please. of dread, and there's five That's of them around the room. That's the first one. Then you got this one. If you have the combo detector on, you'll see the chest actually before you get close enough to it to matter. However you go around the room, try and plan your semicircle. So it looks like we got one up here because I can see the chest behind it. Somebody already hit the switch. And then as you run around, so again, there's 36 of the, you know, vestiges of dread. So if you're sitting here farming, you can actually get quite a bit done. This one's over here. Again, combo detector showing you exactly which one the proper location is so you can be more efficient with your time. Couple of rounds. And then finally, last one is going to be up at the top. And if you've been looking for the bobbleheads, this is where the one in the Castellum is. It would be up in here. But it's random which one's open. You just get two. But the bobblehead is in here for week one. But that is basically the Castellum in complete nature. Now, there's a couple more things that I want to cover with you guys with regards to patrols and resources that I've kind of touched on as we go. Um, so let me go over to that one and we'll wrap this thing up. All right, so the first thing I recommend doing while the actual nightmare containment event is going on is picking up a patrol. You're usually going to find them over here just like you would from patrols from whatever they're going to give it to you. So these are going to be coming from nightmares. I recommend doing the ones that are a pyramid because those are just going to be kill certain enemies and they drop a little collectible that you'll pick up. And the other ones look like those two right there in the middle. They look like the little targets, and those are get precision kills, get kills on enemies. They're both basic ones that you can do while you're during the encounter the whole time. Now, the nice thing about doing patrols, they're going to give you a little extra, extra reputation. They're going to give you extra vestiges of dread. And if you're constantly picking them up and kind of rotating them through, then you'll actually be able to get a lot more out of your time spent during this encounter. Now, the one I would recommend skipping, which there's not one that looks like this, the one that looks like a little ghost is actually going to send you to a different location to just basically scan an area. But if you're doing the event, you don't want to leave the area. So don't do that. That's one thing to make sure you don't do. Now, the other thing to make sure you do while you're running around in this area, and if there's any up, hopefully there are, is pick up the resources. And it's the little resources I told you to put your combo detector on for. And if there's any up and available, which there should be somewhere in this big circle, but it's basically the little red glowing resources and they're going to have a little triangle on your screen when they actually show up. So just like this over here. So these are the ones that you want to pick up anytime you're running around. And the nice thing about having combo detector on is those are going to be visible even if you're not really paying too much attention. Within 40 yards, you're probably going to see it if you're nearby. Pick it up literally while you're killing guys doing pieces of the encounter. So those are the other two things I wanted to mention. So you've got the three different tiers that you got to go through. After the third tier and actually killing the boss, check the five rooms for the two with the basically bonus chest where you can get some little extra reputation, little extra vestiges, maybe a little loot. And then during the encounter as well, pick up uh, the resources from, you know, this destination. And then also make sure that you're doing the patrols. And that way, any time that you spent in Nightmare Containment is benefiting you as much as possible. Well, that's basically where we're going to wrap this one up. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like below. Leave a comment if you've got a question, thought, or otherwise. 
you want to just say hello, you can even do that too. If you want to find me on Twitter, it's Ebontis. Streaming over on Twitch, it's Ebontis, which I'm probably doing right after this video goes up or definitely tomorrow and this weekend with the dungeon. And then if you guys are curious about anything else, you can uh, subscribe to the channel. I'll be covering a ton of stuff for this new season. And as for the new season as well, those of you guys who are YouTube subs and Patreon members, thank you for that extra support. Definitely helps out with all the stuff that I'm trying to cover. So I will see you all very soon in the next video or maybe live in chat on stream. Have a good one. Have a good night.